program is the Afia Morning Show on Afia Television, Channel 254 on DSTV, and of course, Channel 17 on Go TV. Now, I'm sure you saw the uh, All Educators Conference that happened recently in Edugu State. You've seen a lot of activity between the Edugu State Government, the international community, international governing bodies. And now, as it is with this government, it seems getting more ambitious again, going for, well, Fourth United Nations headquarters in Enugu. Why not? I have with me here the Honorable Commissioner for Information, Aka Eze Aka. Good to have you here this morning. Good morning, I'm Dian. Thank you very much for inviting me once again. So let, let me start from let me start from here. Enugu seems to be very ambitious in some of the things it's going for. Um, a UN office yeah. headquarters domiciled in Enugu. Yeah. And I know this one is challenging. Yeah. Because I, it should be the first in Africa, by the way. If yes, the I think it's New York, Geneva, Virginia, and I. But well, I'm somewhere in Nairobi. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, if I may begin, thank you once again. Ambition, they said, should be made of tenor stuff. That's what Shakespeare said. Yes. The tenor stuff we have is that there is a government in Enugu State that is going away from the status quo. Yes. There's a watershed, a movement away from the from what has been disruptive innovation to move forward with life. Life has changed entirely. Things have changed entirely. Bef when I was in primary school, I was using chalk and board. Today, we're talking about smart schools. The television you, your father was using is no longer the one you're using today. Because in my own television days, I had to hit the box. We, we still <laughs> have one on the ground there. The one you slide open. <laughs> so actually, uh, I know there are some confusions people have when we hear that the uh, United Nations is going to build their headquarters in our location in uh, in, in New York. Let me yeah. put it straight. The headquarters of the United Nations is in New York, United States of America. And there are other locations that are replicating the United Nations Headquarters. Yes. There are there are three of them that are replicating it. One is in Geneva. Yes. The other one is in Vienna. Vienna the other one is in Nairobi. And then we are going to have the fourth one. The fourth one is what we are now discussing today, because the there's a promise by the uh, Director General Global, uh, His Excellency Dr. Tibu Moon. I don't know whether. He gave a firm promise that Enugu State, in our lifetime, we have the United Nations headquarters here in Enugu, the, in replication of what is happening in uh, the United Nations in uh, in New York. So the, it's a recognition that the fact that the governor of Enugu State is way ahead of what we have today, and it's a recognition of what. The government, the modest uh, effort of His Excellency in education sector. You remember, if I may go forward, this um, gesture comes from a not so many, so many, almost a year-long investigation of uh, different countries. Do you know the United Nations uh, pillowed down to Cameroon, but in time they discover that there is a place where we have peace, where we have security, where there's very impressive uh, uh, interest in education. Mm. This is a governor that had 33% of his entire budget going to education. The simplest explanation to it is that you, each hundred naira we spend in government, as we give to agriculture, we give to commerce, we give to trade, we give to uh, health. But each hundred naira we spend in all these things, we are locating 33 naira to education. So that's that, quite massive. No so that, government. So I'm going to say that means that Enugu is, is, is the only state in Nigeria that is meeting the UN uh, the, the UN um, stipulations. There are states, with that, are meeting, to there are states that are meeting it in Nigeria, but Enugu state has gone far ahead yeah. of any other state in Africa. Not only in Africa. attraction. Yeah. Not 33% is something awesome. That's why we're building smart schools everywhere. Mm. That's what, and when we say we're building smart schools, people have the idea that it's just uh, mere structures. No, what is there in the smart school? That's not what we are discussing now, but it is important to know that smart schools involve children from three years upwards to uh, SS, uh, GS3 and so on. Two will come to this class and be learning from people who are even in the United States through virtual learning. That's what artificial intelligence, we call it, uh, 
so many of these uh, things that I never knew about, and you never knew until today that we are now passing in. So uh, the smartness of the school talks about what the children, experiential learning the children are going to get, which we never got in our own time, so that they can compete with any child from any corner of the world. So we also hear that, um, you know, um, the IHRC saw something in the educational model for Enugu State yes. that they want to be replicated. Or is it the smart school project or is there something else they want replicated? Yes. We, we, we call it uh, experiential learning. Uh, there are so many words about the pedagogy, anthropology, and so on. But the implication is that they discovered that Enugu State is paying attention to education, not only for people in the city, but we are going to the hinterland, the rural areas, to point out that education is very important. Besides, they saw the, the, the movement, the, the tangential movement of education in Enugu State, where uh, the school enrollment has dropped so low. But the governor of Enugu State, Dr. Peter Ndubisimba, is not satisfied with uh, the, the enrollment. He wants every child to go to school. Every child. No matter his status. No matter where he is. We, and one, he wants every child to receive the best of education, wherever he is. Whether you are challenged or not. Whether you are blind, you are lame, you are healthy, whatever you are, you must go to school. In fact, yeah, uh, the other day, was it yesterday or two days ago, I was with him, and he was telling some people that he doesn't want to see any child hawking anything during school hours. Mm. That's a serious one. So, the United Nations, the, this Niger, Niger Moon, uh, they carried out investigation that is, through, for more than six months yeah. to discover the place where they can hold their, this international conference that just came back. And they discovered that the United States was doing more than the United Nations uh, wanted them to do. So that's why they came to Inugu. And then they came, and uh, I think the, the report has been something wonderful. Because uh, uh, His Excellency Dr. Tim uh, Lumun Ahure uh, was full of praises for His Excellency. Oh. That his, his steps are towards making sure that the children get access to quality education, the children have the, the capacity to, to discuss international program policies and so on, they have the ability to speak well. These are the advantages that this program uh, that we just concluded has. Niger, Niger Moon, I, I, I would like to explain it because so many persons may not know about it. Go ahead. It's a program where students, students, children, from different schools or in Africa, in fact, all over the world, would converge on a place, a peaceful, conducive place, where they will learn how United Nations operate. When I was in primary school, well, well what we just got to know that United Nations was uh, uh, was in New York, they had the capital in New York City, and they have the, the, the secretary there. What was that thing that the, the, the um, Secretary General of the United Nations was uh, uh, Hammer School or you know, Kofi Annan? Or, uh, these are the things we knew. But we are the bringing, operations weren't, the, the operations yeah. weren't clear to us. We didn't know what they were doing. We didn't know what they were doing. So this simulation, simulation is they just bring a, a practice whereby children will sit in the same arrangement where we have uh, the, in the United Nations, because the General Assembly, the uh, Security Council, the ICJ, and uh, the ECOSOG, that's the uh, Economic and Social uh, uh, Commission as well. These, these groups, they have a way they sit in the United, in the United Nations uh, General Assembly. The, the platform, the, the platform where, where if you were there, at, uh, at the, where we held our own, the Governor and the, this, uh, the Director General Global Secretary of State and other invited guests, we are sitting at the table. That's where the United Nations Secretary General will sit. The president will also sit. And you remember, the president is just from any other nation, apart from the, apart from the Security Council. Yes, the Security Council includes China, Russia, uh, France, France, Russia, USA, USA UK. So it's, the next place is the general, where, where other member states will sit. Everyone will sit according to an arrangement. That's what we did here in Enugu. We replicated it here in Enugu. And after sitting there, the next group will be the, the, the security, the, the particular place for the, the, uh, the ECOSOG. 
that's the economic and social uh, and the other place the agencies of the United Nations that's down down that's so that there's a pattern the children will see the pattern but it won't be new to them when they are studying about United Nations I never had this experience but, but today these children will have the experience it's also good for them to interact the children will interact boldness will come into them so that when we move out, when our children move out from Enugu State, they can compete anywhere in the world. Mm. They can be bold enough to tell them that I know about United. Who is the secretary to this United Nation today? Some of us don't know. Why don't we know? Because we don't know about about what is happening in the United Nations. So it's important uh, that Enugu State. It is very something very gracious that Enugu State was selected to host this uh, Nigerian conference. So now we, we have this building now, United Nations domiciles in Enugu. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the global strategic impact of such a, a, a building because it means that automatically Enugu will have to take up some, what I call it, federal responsibility yeah. with, with regards to international relations. Yeah. Because if you have the United States domiciled in your state, it means that you're the host <laughs> for the United Nations in your country. country yeah. uh, automatically, we, we see that, you know, it's not even Zurich, it's Geneva that has the, yes. in terms of anything diplomatic, because they're always in Geneva, not Geneva, even in Zurich or Bern. Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> in Austria, everybody's in Vienna. And yes. So it's the same thing now. If they're in Enugu, Enugu automatically becomes, will I say, Nigeria's second or we say third city after Abuja and Lagos. Yeah, let me, let me, I will, let me explain. You know, this, uh, some years ago, uh, the United Nations office was bombed in Lagos. I mean, in Abuja. Abuja yes. It does not really mean that that is the, the, the difference between that one and here is that uh, Enugu becomes the first port of call mm. when you are talking about United Nations. The HQ and because in Ghana they also have the United Nations office, in Zambia they yeah, still okay. have, in Egypt, all, all these places. But Enugu becomes a place where you can go. Okay, let me give you an instance. If you want to talk about uh, Red Cross, Red Cross, you go to uh, uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Yes. That's Red Cross. It's under United Nations. If you want to talk about uh, um, uh, UNI UNESCO, UNICEF. UNI UNESCO, you go to France. You want to go to UNIDO, yeah, the United Nations, uh, you go to, uh, to, to different, uh, if you want to talk about WHO, you now go to New York, they, that's a particular place where they do it. So there are other places, food, in, uh, if you want to talk about uh, environment, environment programs, you go to Nairobi. So that if uh, okay. Nigeria wants to discuss Anything about environment concerning the United Nations, we'll they will move. They will go to Nairobi to get their expertise. So when Enugu, let us say, let us say that Enugu is going to be the hub for education, sure. for instance, you now come to Enugu because this this event will give us access to it, that international presence. Enugu will now be uh, the educational hub. Of education hub, like, a I'm global an, education I, hub. I'm giving an instance. Yes. Yeah, Enugu will now become a global education hub if I may pick your word. So there's a present, international presence. There will be jobs to be created. Mm. There will be access to experts. Because those who work for United Nations are experts. And their programs will be there. And the, the knowledge created will be something amazing. So it is very important that people will understand what this program was. And we, we got it so right that the man said, in, if he wasn't, in fact, he emphasized it wasn't a joke. That he was saying it that in his lifetime, uh, in Enugu, Enugu State will host the fourth headquarter of the United Nations. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to that because, you know, people, um, people always talk about um, security. But what I always realize is that even sometimes the presence of these, uh, international, the, when there's a lot of international presence, yeah. contrary to the claims that that place becomes a target, actually makes it more secure because the infrastructure is now, what, what would I call it, social security in terms of the, even the layouts of the streets will be part of the security. So, I mean, it, it raises the profile of, of the, the state. state yeah. So, if, the if, if you, so, sorry for cutting yeah. in. If you, if you recall what is happening in, uh, in the Middle East, where uh, Israel is uh, hitting the Gaza so hard and so on, you will see that there was, there was somewhat a mistake where the, the Red Cross was bombed. And uh, it, it, it uh, elicited a lot of international outcry. That's the idea. The idea is that where they are existing, there is always peace around the place. Because the United Nations will be deeply interested in it. And we are the first point of contact if international communities are coming into. That's why I will talk about international presence. So this is an important thing that we have done. And His Excellency 
he was very elated. He, was, he said he was humbled and emotionally touched about the pronouncement of uh, Dr. T. Blum. But is Enugu ready for this kind of very ready. profile ra rise? Very ready, very ready, very, very ready. That's what some of the programs we have in Enugu State are geared towards that, so that international investors will be coming in, mm. like the transportation that we are trying to improve in Enugu State. Uh, it is hurting sometimes, but it is necessary. In biology, we learned that if there's no catabolism, there will be no anabolism. These are the things I recall when I was in secondary school. If there will be no demolition or destruction, there will be no growth. There are certain times when, when you have to, 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 to destroy, destroy in order to build. build. So we are continuously appealing to our people to have the understanding, the support to, our, to the government so that we can move away from uh, underdevelopment to development. Besides, like the theme of this uh, uh, conference we had is the uh, development of education in developing countries. And I think we, Enugu State, is uh, gaming up for it. I am very happy that Enugu State is this ambitious. Thank you. And I mean, what, what we look forward to, I mean, you, the average Nigerian is always lukewarm and worried because we've seen many things start yes. without finishing. But we, we have no choice but to remain hopeful. I mean, it, it's good though that uh, because sometimes when you engage the national community, you are forced to, yes. so to complete what you are doing. Exactly. Because if you don't, it makes you Our well. governor has shown competence, integrity, and uh, obsession to completing any program he starts. For instance, uh, the water program that he engaged in, he says 180. He gave a timeline. So where the reason for giving timelines is that we need to tell our people that we are serious. It's a litmus, that was a litmus test to tell our people that we are ready for business. And it came off at the 25th of November last year. There was water in Enugu. The reticulation problem going on now is just uh, something, uh, I think this is, uh, my, brother, my friend says it's a minus problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We'll Pleasure. be looking and watching and seeing and of course looking forward to um, an Enugu where it, and it good idea. We like, let me call it the educational heartland of, um, of, of the continent. Of the yeah, continent. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here this okay. morning. Aka is the Aka Honorable Commissioner mm -hmm. for information here with us this morning. Mm -hmm. And on that note, we've come to the end of the program. Many thanks to all of you who stayed with us this morning. Uh, many thanks, of course, to the crew and uh, the rest of the production team. I'm Namdi Obanya. And I'm Oji Iwaj. You have a splendid Friday and a week ahead. Weekend ahead, by the way. Weekend. You'll stay a week <laughs> <on> Friday. <laughs> Bye for now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>